It's about that time of the year where NHL Network goes out there and they publish their lists of the top players at each position in the National Hockey League. We've had a lot of fun talking about these lists over the past few years, especially when there was the entire fan voting that could be done with this thing as well. Like, I remember in 2018, we had ourselves Jake Vertan and making the top wingers list because Vancouver Canucks fans just spammed the heck out of his name over and over and over again to get that trending. And I believe in that same season, Washington Capitals fans spammed Jay Beagle's name on the centers list, making him one of the top 20 centers in the entire NHL as well. But this time around, it appears that the NHL Network are not going out there and doing the fan voting, which... I mean, it's understandable why, for obvious reasons. You have too many memers going out there and spamming the results with bad names. But instead, they're going out there and publishing their own lists. They started out with the centers the other day on August 14th. And from the perspective of a Vancouver Canucks fan, I wanted to review this list, go over the names that are listed here, and just talk about where I see my Vancouver Canucks boys in terms of the top centers in the NHL. So... Let's go over the top 20 centers in the National Hockey League according to NHL Network. It goes as follows. Connor McDavid, Austin Matthews, Nathan McKinnon, Dreisaitl, Crosby. Not a bad top five. I think you could debate the order, but these are pretty good names to have in this list. Barkov, Stamkos, Bergeron, Aho, and Zibanejad round out the top 10. And then if you go over to 11 to 20, you have Braden Point, JT Miller, Elias Lindholm, Nazem Kadri, Ryan O'Reilly, Jack Eichel, Jack Hughes, Evgeny Malkin, Elias Pettersson, and Robert Thomas. Now, a lot of people would go out there right away and say, wait a minute, Evgeny Malkin's 18th overall? Bro, the disrespect is real, man. Or, hey, Braden Point is ranked outside the top 10? That's crazy, dude. How the heck do you have Point outside the top 10? And I don't want to go out there and debate every single talking point that Lightning fans and Penguins fans and other NHL fans are going out there and debating. I just wanted to talk about Vancouver because, hey, for the first time in seemingly forever, the Vancouver Canucks actually have multiple names on one of these lists. I remember the days when Brock Besser was included on the top wingers list and you had Pedersen going in there as well, but I think this might be the first time in a while we have multiple Canucks on the same list. Miller is listed as the 12th best center in the entire league, and Elias Pedersen is listed at 19th. Now, starting off just with Vancouver guys and how they compare with each other, do I think JT Miller is a better center than Elias Pedersen? I think if you're talking about consistency, point production fantasy, you're probably looking at Miller being a better bet, because it's a lot more guaranteed that Miller is going to go out there and produce 80-something points on a season, he's going to be a point-per-game-ish caliber guy, and he's going to go out there and do hits, he's going to win board battles, he's going to win face-offs, fantasy stuff, right? If you have a keeper league in your fantasy hockey pool, then hey, a guy like JT Miller is a literally do-it-all kind of player. Meanwhile, Elias Pettersson, he doesn't have the same face-off ability, he does not have the same point production consistency, and he's got a lot to improve on when it comes to his production in general, but that's okay because the guy's only like 22, 23 years old, so nobody's really expecting him to be better than JT Miller in terms of point production and fantasy-like metrics, but there is another point that I wanted to bring up as well, and stop me if you've heard this before. Anytime JT Miller goes out there into the media, he answers questions about players on the team, or he goes onto a podcast like the John Scott podcast he was on a few days ago. Anytime JT Miller is in the spotlight and in front of a microphone, I've noticed this pattern wherein he always says that Elias Pettersson is the best player on the team. Now, how could that be? The guy had 68 points in 80 games played. Miller had... 99 points in 80 games played. Pedersen was completely outproduced by JT, and he doesn't do all the stuff that JT does. What argument is there that says that Elias Pedersen is better than JT? And I think you can really sum it up with one single phrase. It is the X Factor. Elias Pedersen is the type of player that will absolutely dazzle your pants off. He will score goals that'll get you off of your feet off of your feet, off of your seat, and cheering, jumping up and down because holy crap, Elias Pettersson just dangled by three guys before sniping at Top Cheese. He just did the Forsberg move. Oh my gosh, he just tried the Michigan. Elias Pettersson is that type of player that really ignites a fan base every single time he does something crazy with the puck. 
And he does something crazy with the puck like once or twice a game, it feels like. For JT, sure, he's got those moments once in a while too, the goal he scored against the Ottawa Senators where he dangled by the entire team. That was crazy. The shootout goals that he scores where he comes in on the left side, slows down before serpentining into the middle, and then going backhand, forehand, backhand, or forehand, backhand, forehand, or forehand, backhand, forehand, backhand, like he usually does, it's great. But the X factor, the entertainment value out of JT Miller's game, I think it's fair to say Pedersen has a little bit more flair in terms of his on-ice capabilities. He's so different, built different. And so, even though Miller, you could say he's the better center, because he gets more points, he does more things for fantasy, etc., etc., there is a part of me in my heart that does believe that Elias Pettersson can be the better player, the better impact player, and the guy that a lot of Canucks fans see as a more valuable player to the team than JT. I've been the biggest fan of JT Miller ever since he came to Vancouver in 2019, and you could definitely go out there and fact-check that because I made videos saying that it was a good trade back when it was made. But even though I love everything that JT has done with the Vancouver Canucks so far, I gotta say, a lot of his points in 2021-2022 that were on the power play specifically happened to be just plays where him and Hughes are going back and forth and back and forth. Miller to Hughes, Miller to Hughes, Miller to Hughes to Pedersen shoots and scores. Miller to Hughes to Miller to Besser to Horvat in front and he scores. Miller gets like every other pass on the power play, and I feel like a lot of the production that he had this season was inflated by that. Now, I know that's a good thing, like, oh, you're telling me that Miller's not a good player because he can't play on the power play? No, that's not what I'm saying here. I'm saying that, sure, points are great, and JT had a lot of points. It's just the way they got those points isn't enough for me to say with 100% belief in my heart that he's a better player than EP40 who can just absolutely dazzle your pants off. Even Miller says it every time he gets interviewed that Pedersen is the best player on the team. And so even though I could understand why NHL Network went out there and said that Miller was better than Petey in this list right here, by the way, Petey, top 20 center in the entire NHL, that's a pretty good number, I feel. It is interesting to me to note how everything has come down to this, because for me personally, EP40, I feel like I might actually be underrating this guy a little bit. Like, I'm going to be honest, when I saw Pedersen on the top 20 centers list of the NHL, I was like, really? He's there? Okay. Like, I didn't really expect them to put him there. Not because he's not a talented player. I know how talented he is. It's just... 68 points in 80 games played, and the way he played this season, you could definitely debate he was not at 100%, especially early on. And so, I feel like for Pedersen, the ceiling is so astronomically high that the season we saw in 2021-2022, in my opinion, I feel like he's got a lot more to show for it. And that's why I was sort of surprised seeing him already on the top 20 centers list, because it's like, wait, they're already saying he's one of the best centers in the league, but I feel like he can be even better. And so, maybe I'm alone in that assessment, maybe I just have unrealistically, astronomically high expectations for Elias Pettersson and what he's going to be able to do for the rest of the years that he has here in Vancouver, or maybe not in Vancouver, he's only on a bridge deal, isn't he? But, it's nice seeing them on the list. It is. Talk in the comments about your thoughts about JT Miller and Elias Pettersson, whether or not one is better than the other, and the magnitude as to how much one is better than the other. Do you think this difference is enough to go out there and put, what is that, like seven spots in between on the NHL's top center list? Do you think Lindholm, Kadri, O'Reilly, Eichel, Hughes, and Malkin are better players than Pettersson? Miller, being right here, I think it's pretty alright. I don't think I would say that I would take any of McDavid, Matthews, McKinnon, Drysaddle, Crosby, Barkov, Stamkos, Bergeron, Ajo, or Zibanejad over Miller, and especially not Braden Point. I think Miller being listed at 12 is pretty generous right there, and I like it a lot. So you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about the Vancouver Canucks and this entire center debate. Heck, is debate even the right word? I don't know. Debate makes it seem so confrontational, which I don't want to make it seem like it is. I'm just kind of going out there and spitting my thoughts here on the microphone. But either way, thoughts in the comment section below. Elias Pettersson versus JT Miller. Let me know what you think. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.